Today in a Box Break Podcast, I bought a collection of vintage Pokemon. Let's dive into it and crack a couple of champions. Pab, one final shot at Charizard V. Shiny. What is up and what is good and what is going on? You are watching slash listening to the fastest growing financial advice podcast based on cardboard pictures of cartoons. It's a new week, Monday, November the 9th, 2011. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Today we got a different kind of video where I'm going to go into a collection purchase where I have recently acquired a small collection of this many cards. As we can see here, it is quite a few. The seller was kind enough to send them all in top loaders. We will go over that. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, of course, if you haven't. And this is the Box Break Podcast. And there's a vow on this channel. No matter what, every single video, besides the Fast Break series, because those have to be out quick, will have at least some booster pack openings. So we will just, over the course of it, just be getting into a little bit of Champion's Path, right? So with that said, let's get into the cards. So I am still buying base set Pokemon cards. I am still buying Rocket. I am still, even with all the market hype, you would think that these cards, like, oh, it's too expensive, they're too hot. No, I mean, I could sit and wait for the inevitable crash, but I'm not, I don't have a way to predict the future. I don't know if it will. I'm just not going crazy. I'm not saying, all right, you know what? Sell everything I got. I'm going to sell this bed. I'm going to sell this microphone. I'm going to sell my hat, and I'm going to buy everything into original Pokemon. No, I'm not doing that, but I still, in my investments and all the things I have, I still am putting some Pokemon cards from the original base into the set. So, card number one we're going to get into is, of course, as you all know, my favorite Pokemon of all time. Everyone talks trash about the Polyrath. Everyone says, that's the hollow I don't want to get, but you know what? If I'm sitting here saying I'm going to keep buying these because I love Polyrath, has to be a little bit genuine, right? Can't just be, oh, a million is for the money. It's like, nope. I think this is the coolest Pokemon ever. Now, all these cards will be out to PSA probably within almost the time you even see this video. Be even though, as you can see, there's edge wear on the card, there's problems. These will all be transferred over into Card Saver 1s and sent over to my middleman that I use for grading. So, the next card, I put these all face down after the buy came in. I don't remember all the contents. We're just going to open them. And as I look at them, that's you will see it almost the same time I've seen it. We have a Shadowless Machop, right? One of the lesser cards in the collection, but it's still a Shadowless Common. Now, the common and uncommons from the original set are all, like, they're from first edition, are all very expensive now. So, eventually... This will be next in line. That's the what I view it. Where the reason why evolution Charizards are gone so high is because good luck finding a base set one. The next in line will have to. A rising tide raises all ships. So we'll continue to move along here. The next is another Shadowless Machop. This one is got basically a similar bad edge wear. Like I said. I'm willing to send it for grading. I'm going to do the bulk raid. I'm going to do the 45-day, which at this point I think takes about nine years, it feels like, for the card. No, more like six months for the cards to come back. So I'm going to get these cards out to PSA, even though they're, you know, that. But I could see if it's in a slab, and I say this card here is worth a couple of bucks. I could say because it's in a slab, I want 30 for it, even if it's a low grade. I'm never going to lose money on it, I don't think. I think it's fine because I'm doing it cheap. Get it in before any sort of up charge acquires. The next on the other, I know it's another low end one here, is a Shadowless Ghastly. Also nice. Right, this one seems to be in a bit better shape than the Machop, right? But just these are the lower end. Don't worry. The video, I think these cards were stacked in order of value. 
but there is definitely some nicer stuff there. So we're going to get into our first Champions Path pack here as we get into the box break part of the podcast, although this is mostly just talking about the cards in the collection that I picked up. Babide, Machoke, Scraggy, Ekans, Kakuna, Nicket, Energy, and a Zygarde. All right, so let's move those to the side as we go back into the collection. The next card is a Shadowless Ponyta. So another Shadowless Common. This is also fairly nice. I will still be sending them, as I said, to PSA. Nothing more to say too much. Just a vintage card. Always like them. Always love them. We have a Shadowless Sand Shrew. We have our first holographic. And the penny sleeve this is in seems to be a little bit messed up. So as we like, knock it out over here to get it out. Yeah, this is a very heavily played Gyarados from Unlimited. It's might even have some sort of creasing this might be where i don't send it in only because i don't want to send in cards that are damaged right and if it's complete if it's got clear like there's a complete like browning on the edges sometimes these might just end up in some sort of bulk lot or just you know something where i set it on the side that i will figure out what i want to do with it later as i have these vivid of voltage sleeves here that I will just switch this into to not have to deal with the top loader. I will get back to that in a bit. The next card says near mint on the back. That was clearly not near mint it's for something else. It is a Raichu, right? So this is a Raichu Unlimited. Big fan of Raichu. Uh, this one is nicer than the other than the Gyarados. It doesn't have any clear damage on it. Let's just cover that near mint right there. So this one will probably be out to the PSA. Hey, Hitmonchan! The other one, of the, I guess the big, the small three, I would say the bottom tier that most people think are Hitmonchan, Magneton, and um, Polyrath. But I like those Pokemon too. I guess maybe that says something about me. That I like the stuff that people don't like. I've been known to just say, as soon as I see something's really negative, this is a beat up card. Right? But as soon as I hear people say it's negative, that's when I perk up a, and I go, ooh, I kind of, I might want that, you know, because why is everyone running away from it? There's going to be the people who like it are silent. So let's see what this is. This is a Alakazam Shadowless, an absolutely creamed Shadowless Alakazam, probably closer to damaged, but still an Alakazam, still Shadowless. Probably not worth sending in only because it's actual damage. It isn't just heavily played, but I will have to consider that later on. Next card is a Machamp first edition. Now these, I have another Machamp right here, right? I have a few of these. These were part of the starter deck, right? That the everyone has seen these if you played pokemon in the day we've all had this card so just because it says first edition as you can see it's not shadowless it's the first edition of the deck so it's not anything crazy worth getting i would just say that these but in very good condition psa 10 condition these have great value to it so as the stack gets a little shorter let's crack another champion's path don't you now a Rainbow Zard or a Shiny Zard would probably go above all of these cards here. Now, people say they don't know. like They're not sure. They keep seeing me put the wrapper on the bed. I think I'm just going to make that my thing. So here you go. The wrapper could sleep right there, right? A little code for everyone there. I've actually been playing the Pokemon TCGO. Uh, it got the, I got the Reshi Zard uh, thing. The game is actually kind of fun. It's kind of cool, and that deck's really good. I mean, I don't know much about the metagame. But I haven't been enjoying myself playing it. So an Altaria and an Altaria. How about that? Look at that. Now, see, you want to do this with the nicer cards, maybe with Marnie. But whatever the case is, that is that. So let's go back into the pile. We have a Nine Tails, right? So this is a Nine Tails regular unlimited holographic. Also really played up on the edges again. This is what you're going to end up getting when you buy these like larger collections is you end up getting 
A lot of the cards that are heavily played, people don't know what to do with them. But I just like them. I don't mind having a position in them. If I'm not paying a lot for them in the future, maybe they could be worth something where it's like clean ones don't exist unless you're paying huge money. So I don't mind seeing maybe the next thing is the heavily played versions. So we'll see. Carrying on. It's another. Ooh, no. This is a shadowless nine tails. How about that? Now, for those who can't tell the difference, I know some people ask me, hey, how, what, how do you tell? See the difference? You got this shadow on the card here versus shadow here, right? Shadow lists are much rarer than the unlimiteds. So, as you can see here, nice centering on this. This one will have some edge wear all over the bottom, but it's no problem right there. And send this out, of course, to PSA. Not going to get a high grade. Probably looking in the 4 or 5 range. But I think that a slabbed one will be worth more than the non slab one. There won't be any crazy upcharge for insurance on it. It's fine. The next is another Polyrath. To add to the family of Polyraths, people know me by now. They get it. Polyrath is my guy. If you have them, I am always looking for more, no matter the situation. Next card is a Muck. Our first card from Fossil, right? So it's like they talk about the Unlimited. Everyone knows base set, base set, base set. Don't sleep on Fossil, don't sleep on Jungle, and definitely don't sleep on the Neo series, right? Those cards are all very good. We have Muck. Nice Muck here. Not a very pleasant-looking Pokemon, but it is a very cool card indeed. The next card is another Fossil card with a Kabutops. Kabutops? Kabutops. I don't know, but... It is this card nonetheless. We have some silvering on the top for a peel back and a bit of edge wear as well. Without taking the cards out of the top loader, I would have a hard time telling the surfaces on these. I'm just going to assume that they're played as well. And again, none of these are going to be fairly high grade, but they're nice to have for the pile anyway. A Nido Queen. Okay. One of my favorite Pokemon from back in the day. I actually prefer Nido Queen to Nido King. I found it to be more of a believable Pokemon. But this is a very heavily played Nido Queen. But still like it. Still happy to have it. Moving along, a Chansey. Shadowless Chansey. How about this one? Heavily played around the edges as well. Maybe closer to damage down on the bottom. But still a Chansey. Now, these usually have print lines on them, but when it's this heavily played and I can see the scratches on the hollow, you, I don't think we're worrying about print lines at this point anymore. We know the deal. A shadowless Hitmonchan. So, continuing on, we can see the, the basicness of this collection here. We're picking up a lot of the underground right of the where everyone's looking at the top right everyone's looking up at all these charizards and first edition blastoise and all this and there's me just picking up this stuff while no one's looking no one's looking at this this is something where you can still if you want to build the collections in base set it's still possible good luck finding beta soul rings you get what i'm saying Good luck finding those while everyone was looking at thing or like an alpha demonic tutor while everyone was looking at power. There were people picking up the other stuff. This is a shadowless Gyarados. And this is a nice Gyarados here, right? Of course, Edgeware. Nothing's flawless on the card, but it's a nice shadowless Gyarados. Who knows where it won't be possible to pick up Gyarados soon. The pile continues with a Snorlax from Jungle, excuse me, right? Beautiful card again. One of my favorite artworks of all time in any card. Iconic art is Snorlax. Someone needs to get him the Poke Flute to get him up. So speaking of Poke Flute, let's wake up another pack of Champions Path. I'm really excited today. I'm feeling good. Last week was a bit of a bummer. This week, it's really I, I'm feeling good. You know, we're gonna get all the collections in, and this Friday we have so many releases. We have the official Vivid Voltage release. We have... Oh, there's a hit in the back of this pack. We have Commander Legends. And I believe I am getting in my Yu-Gi-Oh! Maximum Gold. Vulpix. All right. There's a hit in the back of this. Hit like to give me the power to pull the Charizard. Hit like. Hit subscribe. Let's get it. 
No, it is not Charizard, but it is a hop. Supporter card, draw three cards. If that was a magic card, that would be very expensive. But it's not. It's just hop. But he wants to give me the fist bump of glory. Let's get this into a sleeve here and move it along to the next one. So I appreciate all the people who liked in order to try to give me the power for Charizard. We still have two more packs to try to get that. But let's get deeper into the collection as we hit up a Shadowless Magneton. Right? Love it. Love Shadowless Magneton. Lo love all the hollows from the original set. I love all the Pokemon cards. You know, these cards will always be very nostalgic to me and to and many of you as well. The next is another... Oh, this is a Shadowless Raichu, right? So we have a Shadowless Raichu with a lot of scratching, heavily played in the back. There will be a Guess the Grade episode coming forward and eventually, but these will all be on the late, but I have a Guess the Grade coming up hopefully soon where I have a Shadowless Charizard coming back. All right, let's start getting into the regular rares here with a de-evolution spray. Now, these aren't going to uh, really drive anybody to the market, but I do like having the trainer cards. This, I believe, I have a hard time finding the Shadowless. I believe there's a Shadowless one, but we have a trainer card there. Now, another trainer card in Super Energy Removal. <laughs> this is the card where if you open it out of a pack, it's like, womp, womp, womp. Next is a Shadowless Ponyta. So back to the commons. This is a fairly nice one. This is another Shadowless Gas. I know there are some first ed commons in here. There's two cards that I'm very excited to see as they come up. We have another Near Mint card. It's a double colorless energy. Okay. I know that some of this stuff was just thrown in, right? Another near mint, LOL. It is another double colorless. All right, so let's continue along here with a revive. Put one basic Pokemon from your discard pile onto the bench. It's like a reanimator, right? And put damage equal to half of its HP. That'd be a good magic card, right? Just like it comes with X plus one plus one counters, minus one minus one, where X is half its power. The next is the Pokemon Flute. I forgot this was even a card as I'm buying collections. I'm trying to find the Snorlax as I was making the Pokemon Flute joke as I dig over. One last chance to get there. There he is. Together again. Together again. Okay. Carrying on. The piles are more than halfway done now. We have a Switch still played in the game. I believe this is legal. Like, if I wanted to run the original copies, Switch is still a card. It's still played. It's still good. More Switches. Another Shadowless Machop. We're trying to dive through. Okay, let's get into this here. We have the first edition energy. Seems to be played up a bit. I think that PSA 7 energies, first edition cards, they're cheap. They're cheap first edition cards. How much can you really... Like, is it really bugging you to put $15 into one? You know, if you want to say, hey, I have a first edition card, yeah. All right, so you don't have the Charizard. Not, most people don't. Most people, we could all sit and talk about how we don't have that. Here's a first edition Dratini. I believe an uncommon, yes. Pretty, pretty dirty on the front, I could see, unless it's the loader. Backs played too. All of the first edition cards, as long as they are not damaged, are going to PSA for me. It's just, I'm treating it like I treat Alpha and Magic. Where as long as it is, I can see what the card is and it doesn't have all the damage on the back, I'm sending all of those cards to grade. It just seems too easy, too obvious. A first edition double colorless energy continuing along. This should be a lot of commons and uncommons from the set for first edition. Let's continue here as the stack is reaching its apex. It's a first edition needle ran mail. Right? Mail, I guess. Yeah, it's the Nidoran mail. Looks like maybe a thin stamp there. That that might be pretty cool. I don't know if the non-hollows come. I, I think they do, right? But it's a nice Nidoran. Next is a first edition Rattata. Rattata? Rattata, right? So this is a nice one as well. Now it's got a little play along the edges there. 
but still a Rattata. A Kakuna Matata, as it is another first edition comp. Uncommon, right? Yeah. It's a first edition uncommon. Not as easy to find as people think. A Tangela. Very nice. As one of the GoPros decides to yell at me. A Kadabra! Now, you cannot find a Kadabra in most sets now, because I don't think they made a Kadabra card for years. If someone in the comments section below could tell me the story of why they don't make Kadabra cards anymore, that'd be great. A clearly heavily played Kadabra, but it is a first edition card nonetheless. A Rattata, again, heavily, more heavily played than the others. We're looking at threes and fours here. An Abra, a first edition Abra. Very nice card, very nice. A little played along the edges there. A first edition coffin. And it is also fairly nice edge wear along the edges there. But we are getting first edition cards. Okay, let's get ourselves into another champion's path. So we are still hoping to find the shiny Charizard V. It is getting late in the game for me. These were just some random champion's path packs that I had laying around. That I've decided to break into because of a promise made to you guys that this is we will get pack openings of something in every single non fast break episode with a scrafty. And we got one more pack of that, but let's get right back in to show the cards that people want to see. We have a first edition coughing. It is a bit more played in the corner there than the other one. We have a Doduo card, right? Very nice, very nice. Played along the edges there, but this is nicer than some of the other ones. We have a Metapod. Very nice. A lot of these cards, they're all very well centered. Usually you don't see such good centering from first ed. I guess this one's got a little more top to bottom, but not bad. A Dugong Gong Gong. Love to see Dugong. Love to see it. Played along the bottom there, but still a dugong. A Magnemite, right? One of my favorite Pokemon as a kid for some weird reason. I guess I really just love the Lieutenant Surge uh, story. where the And I just liked how it sounded. It was a weird kid, right? So were all of you. We're all sitting here talking about cardboard and how much money we can make on it. Here's one of the ones I'm very excited for. I believe there are two of these. Spoiler. Yes. So we have a Magic Carp Carp, right? The front of this looks very nice. Very well said. I think Magikarp is one, basically, so of the commons, you want the starters uh, and you want Pikachu. I believe that Magikarp is actually like, it's a low key, very popular. And I think that does a lot for it in the long term. We got some damage here, right, a little whitening, but all in all, a very nice Magikarp. This is one I'm excited to see come back from PSA. Hopefully you can get at least an eight. That would be nice, but I don't know. And this is another Magic Carp here, I know. And it this is also very nice. Can't tell if that's in the sleeve or not. But this is a nice Magic Carp as well. So, jumping into the next, we have a Jinx. And these are all... Well, no, this Jinx is messed up here. It's like I'm turning the card over and I'm finding the issues at the bottom. Let's dive through. We have a pair of Starmies here. We'll start going through the commons a little bit faster. Let's get this off the card so we can see it. Very nice, very nice. Professor Oak, first edition. So we're getting into the trainer cards again. A imposter Professor Oak, right? This is Among Us with this one here. Although this one is not first edition. So have we gotten into non-first eds? Yeah, we have a trainer Lass, a Scoop Up, a Pidgeotto. Now these cards... Uh, maybe the Shadowless, I will. The Unlimiteds, I will probably not be sending out for any grading yet. Those will go into a box that will be labeled. Here's a Pikachu, Yellow Cheeks, uh, Shadowless Pikachu, which is very nice here. Got some played around, but that one will probably go to PSA. We have more Shadowless common, Uncommons here with Nidorino and Arcanine. We have an Item Finder, an Item Finder. A computer search, a Pokemon trader, a Clefairy doll, a Dragonair, right? This card was always so hard for me to find as a kid. I never found Dragonairs. A Shadowless Jinx, 
a Shadowless Magmar. And with the last few cards, we'll just dive in. Whoop, as the Switch, it's okay. Switch was trying to fall out of the top loader. We just have these here. So it's a lot of first ed commons. It's a lot of hollows. It's just your random pickups from the original set, adding to positions, adding to the piles. You never know. And let's go out with a bang. Champions Path, last pack, probably the last Champions Path on the channel. But I don't want to make any promises as we get into this here. So please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel as we go into all the new products coming out this week. Really excited, really ready to see some cool stuff. There's a hit in the back of this pack. So as we get into it, let's see. Let's get some likes in the, ch in the comments. Let's get some comments in the likes. We got a hit. Hyper Potion. And the card is... And Elder Goss V. So thank you very much for checking out the fastest growing financial advice podcast based on cardboard pictures of cartoons, the Box Break Podcast. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their week.